best Marvin Harrison Jr., the best wide receiver prospect of all time this year. This is Big Dumb Football. I am Spencer Hall. I am talking to you from the Big Dumb Garage, where we are going to answer the questions about football that you need answered. What is a Marvin Harrison Jr.? He's 6'4". He plays wide receiver for the Ohio State Buckeyes. He is terrifying. He is fast. He says he wants to run a 4-3-8 at the NFL Draft Combine. When he worked out with C.J. Stroud and caught balls for him, he was a distraction because people said they were window shopping for next year just looking at him. He's a monster. Let's figure out exactly what kind of monster. You might be asking, well, who does he remind you of? That's a cheap trick. Comparisons are shallow ways to look at a player. So let's make some shallow comparisons because that's all we've got. Comparing him to several different receivers is going to have to happen here because he combines so many different things from so many good receivers. He's reminiscent of so many talented dudes. He's like Randy Moss in terms of being physically dominant. He's a better route runner, though. His route running is more reminiscent of somebody like a Devontae Adams or a Keenan Allen, all right? His catch radius, it can be DeAndre Hopkins-esque, although not quite as, you know, stretchy and unreal. And then to me, in terms of strength, he's like A.J. Green. He's like a Julio Jones. He's like the kind of guy who, if it's one-on-one -on -one and I need you to body away from a guy, he's definitely got the kind of brawn to do that. And yeah, he's got some Calvin Johnson in him, especially because I think we're just sort of scratching the surface of what his potential is because he will play with professional quarterbacks. I mean, he's already played with a professional quarterback in terms of CJ Stroud. And like Jamar Chase, he's reminiscent of him because he's open. He's always fucking open. This is where we get into coverages and why wide receivers are some of the most dangerous and some of the most over-considered prepared for players because we talk about coverages and things that you can do to take away a wide receiver. One, you can have a cornerback who's just as good as Marvin Harrison Jr. There may be three or four of those in the world right now and maybe one in college. I wish you luck. It's probably a better idea to try the following things. See if you can get into a coverage where you're doubling him, bracketing him. You have two guys on him at all times. Does this open up opportunities for other players down the field? I'm so glad you asked. Yes, it absolutely benefits them, which is one of the ways he can affect a game, even if he's not catching a lot of balls. He opens up space on the field for everybody else. Additionally, you could do the thing that makes wide receivers so very nervous about their position in life, which is you can beat up on the quarterback. That's it. Apply pressure to the delivery system, and he may never even see the ball. Notre Dame did a pretty good job in coverage against him, and he still caught ball. There's only so much you can do. He's less something that you can prevent and more something that you have to mitigate. But he is someone you can point to and say, if he's not there, our entire game plan changes. That goes for both the offense and the defense. You know, this is one of the reasons why receivers are so dangerous. And yet I think at times, and we'll get to this, why they're so insecure, because they can make such a huge impact on the game. And then at the same time, if you do certain things to players who have no relation to them directly on the football field, you can really affect their production. That's just how important he is. You might guard him like a defensive end for 59 snaps, 60 snaps. And on the 61st, that's when the game ends, when he catches a long ball on you. Well, you know, as I am a Heisman voter, let's put a sound effect, like a ding, trophy, stars. I can't give you a good reason why he shouldn't win the Heisman. And that's because in recent years, we focused on quarterbacks. Like the Heisman really needs to, I think, broaden their understanding of what makes a player so valuable. It's about the most outstanding player. It's not about the most outstanding quarterback or running back. And in the case of what he means to Ohio State, he means an immense amount, especially because of bringing along a new quarterback, being the guy who is his safety valve, his outlet, as well as his best playmaker. He is, I think, the most outstanding player in a respect because he's the one you pay the most attention to when game planning offensively for Ohio State. He's also the one who, yes, might only need one or two plays in order to break an entire game open. That, to me, that puts him in the upper echelon. That means he should at least be considered for the award. The good news, in conclusion, is that Marvin Harrison Jr. is obviously an elite prospect. He's obviously unique. He's obviously a special player who has special potential, uh, both for the rest of this college season and beyond. The bad news is you're an elite wide receiver. Your existence is dependent on at least six other people doing their jobs perfectly and one other person doing their job poorly, the cornerback in front of you. 
Also, circumstances can sabotage a lot of potential or at least delay it. You have slow starters like Steve Smith and Devontae Adams, who took a while to catch on in the league. You have guys like Peter Warwick, who ended up in the league possibly at the wrong time because, let's emphasize, Peter Warwick was so cool. He was so cool. I will never believe he was uncool and could not be a great pro player. I just think the league wasn't ready for him, and he ended up in the wrong place. You can even have great players who start off great, who end up like Randy Moss having periods in their career like his Oakland period, where he didn't really look like Randy Moss and didn't have the chance to. Why? It's a big, dumb sport, which is why Marvin Harrison is both the easiest pick and the surest thing I can tell you about at wide receiver and also one of the most uncertain.